everyone and welcome to today's video. Welcome back to my channel. As you can tell from the title of this video today, I am talking to you about my own car, the RS3 you can see in the background. It's very dirty today. Um, in fact, it's been that dirty for the last month. I'm not one of those people that has their car cleaned every weekend. I'd like to, but I'm just, well, lazy. So I don't. 20,000 miles. I can't believe it's come around that quick. 20,000 miles in less than one year. So in this video, my plan was to recap that year and talk about how, or talk about the ownership experience this far. This far, thus far, so far. I don't know which one to go with. But anywho, it's been nearly a year. Now, as some of you will know, I've had some challenges with owning this car. I'm not going to talk about those too much, but I am going to touch on them because they do fall into the overall experience I've had. And I'll also give you a very brief update on my complaint with Audi and where that ended up ending. So let's kick off with the negatives. There are three main things I've always complained about since owning this car. Number one is the brake squeal. I've just learned to live with that now. Occasionally it does it and it's really bad and it still gets to me, but for the most part, I've just learned to ignore it. I will at some point change the pads to aftermarket pads, but I just haven't got around to doing that yet. So the brake squeal is something that you should be aware of if you are considering buying an RS3. You should also know that they're very unlikely going to tell you that it's a characteristic of the car during the sales process, but, well, there isn't a but, the brake squeal. The second is the oil consumption, and actually this is more of a positive because the oil light hasn't come on since the car last went into Audi, probably three, maybe four months ago now, so you could actually strike that off as a positive and say that that's been resolved. I don't know what they did, but... I haven't had to top the oil up in four months, so they did something right. And then the last one, which is the main one, um, is the tyres. So I have spent just under £1,300 on the two front tyres. Ironically, the rear tyres are the same tyres that came with the car. They're a bit close, I've got to be honest. I'm cutting it fine, but they're still legal. However, the two front tyres have been challenging. So. As you may recall, the two front tyres had worn on the inside so badly, in fact, the beading was showing, so they had to be replaced. I then had some bad luck. I hit a pothole and one of the side walls blew out, so that needed to be replaced. And then a few weekends ago, I had an issue whereby I went, had a coffee. I was in the coffee shop for probably an hour. I come out and my tyre was completely flat, dead flat. I was like, great. What uh, what it turned out was that the tire had again worn on the inside so badly that a hole had just appeared. It just a hole, maybe a five p coin size hole had appeared in the tire on the inside. Um, real nightmare. It was on a Sunday. Couldn't find a replacement tire, you know, within reasonable distance. So we had to drive half an hour to another town to buy a Bridgestone tyre, put the Bridgestone on, drove the car back home and then had to replace it for the Pirelli R02 fitment tyre because I didn't want the tyres to be mismatched because then that would have, you know, I don't know, probably done something to the way the car drives, etc. So I just didn't want to take that risk. So I had to replace that tyre. So yeah, in total, just under £1,300. I try to not think about it too much because every time I do it, it gets me more and more down but I'd like to say it's just one of those things and it's a part of owning an RS3 but I don't think it is because I reached out to a few people on Instagram who also own these cars and some people have different tyre setups than I do and some people just have better luck than I do but you try calling tyre places on a Sunday and explain to them that the front tyres are wider than the rear tyres they just think you're insane I like, know you've got it wrong. I'm like, nope, I'm definitely, I'm, I'm looking at the tires right now. They are right there in front of me and they're definitely wider at the front. I did some research online and apparently Audi do this intentionally to counter the understeer. But, you know, those are the, the, the negative things, I guess. You know, the things that um, have been more challenging in uh, owning the car. 
I think I've said this in videos before, but this was such a big deal to me. Um, I was obsessed with owning an RS3. And, you know, I'll include some footage now of me test driving the old 2013 8P RS3. Um, I couldn't afford it. There was no way I could afford it, but the Audi dealer uh, was very kind and let me test drive the car. And from that day, I was just obsessed. I wanted one. So when I finally collected this car, it was such a big deal for me. And I think the challenges that I've had, and I know I've come across very negative in previous videos, but I think those challenges, uh, they almost, I feel a little let down, if that makes sense. But moving on to the positives, let's talk about why I still own the car and why I plan on keeping the car for probably another year. I still love the car. I love the car. I love the way it drives. I love the way it corners. Hello. Am I okay to record here? No yeah. I, I have no problem with oh, that's great. Thank you very much. You cool. Thank you. <laughs> I've lost my train of thought. It will come back in a moment. Just bear with me. Oh, that's it. So I love my car. I love the way it looks. I love the way it drives. I still like driving my car. Um, I think. For me, because I use the car as a, a daily car, and I do daily car things and dad things in the car, so I drive to work, I ferry my daughter around, <coughs> excuse me, I ferry my daughter around from taking her or collecting her from nursery, and when I'm doing those things, I just usually have the car in comfort. I tell myself that it's, uh, you know, more comfortable on the road, it's not, but I drive it in comfort. Just because I want to drive the car regularly, I don't want to be racing around all the time, etc. But then when I'm on my own over the weekends or if I'm, you know, just going out for a drive with some of my friends and I do have the opportunity to put my foot down in dynamic, it just, it still, it still surprises me. This car still surprises me. It's an absolute beast. I know that... You know, I know that everybody knows the RS3 is a quick car. But sometimes I do think people don't realise just how quick they are. It's phenomenal. The 0 to 60 is quoted at I think 4.1 seconds. It's definitely quicker than that. Audi are very reserved with their 0 to 60 times. Mine is definitely quicker than that. Um, I actually launched my car for the first time a few months ago. I know um a year in and i didn't i just ha just didn't really have a desire to launch the car so i thought oh let me just give it a go like i was launching my s3 all the time all the time so i thought let me just give this a go and it's it's just crazy it's phenomenal it takes your breath away and um the one thing that never gets old about this car is the sound i very often drive when i'm on my own even at low speeds just you know, pootling along through a high street, I'll very often just put the back windows down, put it into S mode, and just the sound, it just does not get boring. There's so many different characteristics of the sound of the car. So there's the sound when you're at lower speed. There's the sound when you're really going for it. And then you've got the manual using the paddles, pops and bangs. But then, in my opinion, if you just leave the car in auto in S mode, and let the car downshift for you, you get even better pops and bangs. So there's just a lot of different characteristics to the sound of the car. It really is. It really is a great car. Um, and I think over the past couple of months, because I've, I guess, accepted those challenges for what they are, I feel as though I've started to love the car even more. And I've been joking with a few of my friends, etc. And I've now decided to name my car Eleanor. For those of you who may remember Gone in 60 Seconds, an absolute classic. Nicolas Cage's character calls the GT500 Eleanor because of the challenges it always presents to him. This is the same. It was a car I dreamed of owning and it's caused me nothing but challenges, but that's okay. Okay, so I've switched lenses and we're now gonna talk about the exterior of the car. I should probably say at this point, this far into the video, if you've made it this far, I have a cold which is why I sound like this. I've got a snotty nose. Yeah, I'm not feeling good, but commitment. 
Okay, so let me just give you a quick tour of my car. So here it is. This is my RS3. It's in Aura Blue, which is a crystal effect paint. You can't really tell at the moment because it's so dirty. But if we just get up close in the sun, you might be able to see, I don't know. But just to talk through the spec. So I have the 19 inch black five spoke rotor alloys. Um, the alloys are the one thing that I sometimes question with my car because I do think that the, the matte aluminium alloys sometimes look nicer. But I think it's more because they're a bit glossy and I'd prefer them if they were maybe matte. So for today, for example, because they're so dirty, they actually look quite good. I have the matte aluminium pack. I wanted the black styling pack, but I, when I went into Audi, I did actually spec the black styling pack on a white RS3. But when I saw this car, I thought it just looked really good. The color combo. So, um, quite happy with that. Uh, just trying to think through other optional extras. Oh, this has the comfort and sound pack. So the mirrors fold in. Um, here's the back of the car, even dirtier than the rest. I have the sports exhaust, which is a must. I will include a clip of the car now and me being obnoxious and revving it in a car park. Most importantly, we have the Peppa Pig piggy on board. Baby sign, forgotten what they're called. Baby sign? I don't know. But anyway, that's there to let people know that I have a child on board sometimes. So if you see me driving around and I'm doing the speed limit, as I should be, but no, for real, if you ever see me and you wonder, why is he driving so slow? That's why. Matilda is probably on board. Um, inside of the car, um, I have the Audi Sports seats. I think these are just the standard, standard option. Oh no, they're not. No, so these are also an optional and extra. And that, by the way, that was optional extra. Um, so I have these, really comfortable. Um, up the front here, we have the, um, carbon inlays um, I know some of you are probably thinking why is the car seat in the front I've just moved it here whilst I was putting all my camera stuff on the back seats um, in terms of so this has the um, virtual cockpit uh, one of the good things about this is that you can have your sat nav on there I rarely use this if I'm being honest I still use this screen um, the main reason is because I, I think because I'm so tall, looking down at this feels quite unnatural and I don't want to be looking down when I should be concentrating on the road, if that makes sense. Um, so I still use this. Um, I also prefer using Apple CarPlay and having the maps run off of my phone instead, uh, just because you can do avoid motorways, which I like to do wherever possible because that way you can um, you know check out more scenic routes etc and not always just be on a road and, and stuff like that so um, not really much else going on in the interior spec wise I just I think as a package this car just looks really really nice really really nice and as I mentioned a little earlier in the video I am going to keep this car for probably another year I think to the back end of next year I'll begin to think about what could replace this in my in one of my previous videos I think the one before the last video I posted I said that I wanted a Range Rover Sport unsurprisingly I have changed my mind and I now am obsessed with getting an RS6 and that's mainly because the new RS6 is incoming <laughs> excuse me the new RS6 is incoming and 
the RS6 performance's value is coming down, which might sound like a negative, but actually that's a real positive because it means that I could get an RS6 performance for, you know, 65, 70,000, and that would be amazing because that is the ultimate crossover car, in my opinion. Family oriented performance, that's what we want. But we shall see. So I'm gonna wrap this video up for today. Um, I hope this video has been enjoyable. If there is anything that you want to know about my car, please do ask away. If there is anything you'd like to know about RS3s in general, then do let me know. But thank you all very much for watching. And if you're new here, please do subscribe because I am gonna be posting content more regularly. And until the next video, peace. Oh.